Hey tennis fans, I'm Grace Carter and this is Tennis Now presented by Tennis Express. Tennis Express, talk to our racket and shoe specialists. Wimbledon took steps to put a lid on court number one and they put a ban on Ily Nastasi this week. The grass court Grand Slam will increase prize money by 12.5% in 2017, bringing it to a total of 31.6 million pounds or about 41 million US dollars. And Wimbledon extended its television pact with the BBC until at least 2024. The All England Club announced the first phase of its Court One project is underway now, and here's what it looks like. The three-year remodeling of Court Number One is going to feature a new retractable roof, wider and more comfortable seats for the fans, that's good news, and two new rows of about 900 seats by the time the project's finished sometime in 2019. For this year's Wimbledon, which begins next month, court number one is going to retain a partial fixed roof with a capacity of about 11,500 fans. That's the same seating capacity as last year. Officials also announced they have banned controversial Romanian Fed Cup captain and 1973 Wimbledon doubles champ Ily Nastasi from the Royal Box for this year's championships. The chairman told the media that Nastasi is not going to receive an invitation this year. That ban comes in response to Nastasi's vile, foul-mouthed meltdown during Romania's Fed Cup tie versus Great Britain, in which the Hall of Famer cursed out both the British captain and Kia Thovong and British number one Joanna Conta before he was bounced out of the tie by the ITF, which then revoked his credential and announced an investigation into his weird actions. Now, you may recall Nastasi actually defied that ITF Fed Cup ban and defended his comments. So what happens if the ITF suspends Nastasi and he shows up at Wimbledon as a paying fan? Well, officials say if he does that, he's going to be stopped. In an interview with Romanian website Sports Pro, the 70-year-old Nastasi called the decision small-minded. He says, what does Wimbledon have to do with anything I said about Serena at a match in Romania? He says if he did something stupid at Wimbledon, he would understand, but in this case, he doesn't get it. He says if they consider it normal to deny someone the chance to watch tennis matches, then that's their problem. All right, moving on. On the issue of a potential wild card to Maria Sharapova, all England club officials said Maria's record as a former Wimbledon champion and her results in her comeback are going to be considered among several factors in the decision on whether to award her a main draw wild card. The Wimbledon committee is going to make that decision on June 20th. Sharapova reached the Stuttgart semis in her first tournament after serving her 15-month doping ban. If Maria, now ranked 262 by the way, can post strong results in Madrid and Rome, she can improve her ranking enough to gain direct entry into Wimbledon. The cutoff for that is May 22nd. Several players, including Wimbledon champ Andy Murray, Angelique Kerber, Caroline Wozniacki, and Aga Rudwanska have all publicly opposed tournaments granting wildcards to Sharapova or any player returning from a doping ban. The 30-year-old Russian is both a former Wimbledon champ and one of the leading clients of IMG, which has very deep business ties to Wimbledon. There is speculation another reason why Wimbledon could give Maria a main draw wild card rather than a wild card into qualifying, as Roland Garros has suggested, is because Wimbledon qualifiers are staged off-site at Roehampton, which only has enough space for about a thousand fans. There's concern that site just can't hold the crowds that they're expected if Sharapova plays. Meantime, Roland Garros is expected to announce its wild cards on May 16th, with speculation it will award Maria a qualifying and not a main draw wild card. We know Agnieszka Wawanska is a ninja with a racket in her hand. Well, now Aga is a Jedi warrior with a lightsaber in her hand. No, Aga's not taking her talents to a galaxy far away. This is all part of the Rome tournament celebrating International Star Wars Day, which was born from the fun pun, may the fourth be with you. Davis Cup joined in on the fun, reimagining Roger Federer in Star Wars. And of course, Novak Djokovic doesn't wait until May 4th to celebrate Star Wars. Remember years back, Novak celebrated Halloween at the Paris Masters, taking a walk on the dark side. Can't wait to see how he celebrates Cinco de Mayo. In other news, Grigor Dimitrov geared up for the tie-break tennis exhibition in Madrid that precedes the Mutual Madrid Open. Grigor and Pablo Cuevas got their kicks on the red clay playing some soccer tennis. And that's our news for now. I'm Grace Carter. We'll see you next time here on Tennis Now.